science class. My name is Ejiro Ifiri. In today's lesson, we shall be looking at the topic crude oil and petrochemicals. This topic is in the theme science and development. I encourage you to pay attention because at the end of today's class, you should be able to define crude oil, natural gas, and petrochemicals. You should also be able to describe the process of refining crude oil. You should identify the components of crude oil and you should be able to state the uses and importance of crude oil and petrochemicals. What are crude oil? What are natural gas? And what are petrochemicals? All of these are chemical substances. We use different chemical substances for various purposes. We use them daily. Some of these chemical substances are used in our stoves and in our cooking gases. They are also used in our vehicles to run them. We use them to power our generators and to power the engines of equipment and other machines. Examples of such chemicals, chemicals used for these purposes are kerosene, to, power, to fuel our stove, diesel, petrol, cooking gas, and so on. These types of chemicals are called petrochemicals. Why are they called petrochemicals? They are called petrochemicals because they are manufactured from two special group of naturally existing chemicals. These two groups of chemicals are crude oil and natural gas. Crude oil and natural gas, as I mentioned earlier, are chemicals that occur naturally in our environment. Let's take the first one, crude oil. Crude oil is a dark colored liquid that occurs naturally deep inside the ground. Crude oil occurs in the ground. It's not something you can see on the surface of the earth or around a neighborhood. It occurs deep inside the ground. Crude oil is a mixture of liquids. You know what a mixture is by now? A mixture means we have more than one type of liquids in crude oil. And we say it is found inside the ground. We can also say it is found underground. Crude oil is also called petroleum. So when people talk about petroleum products, or when people talk about petroleum, they are making reference to crude oil. How about natural gas? Natural gas is a mixture of gases that is found deep inside the ground. So while we have crude oil that is found underground, we also have natural gas found underground. Crude oil and natural gas are extracted from the ground, that means they are gotten from the ground, and they are processed in the factory or in the industries to produce different types of chemicals and various items. All of these chemicals and items that are produced using crude oil and natural gas are called petrochemicals. Isn't that interesting? So we get crude oil, we also get natural gas, and we use them in various industries and factories to manufacture petrochemicals. Now how is this crude oil formed in the ground? How did it get underground? Crude oil and natural gas are formed as a result of the breakdown of living things which died millions of years ago. So plants and animals that died millions of years ago were buried inside the ground and they began to break down. They broke down to a point where they became crude oil and natural gas. Let's find out how this happened. We said this breakdown occurred due to the effect of heat, pressure, and the activities of bacteria on the dead plants and animals. You know, when a living organism dies, it's expected that, that, living, it's expected that the body of that living organism begins to decay. This decay is due to the activities of bacteria, the effect of heat, and also the effect of pressure. When all of these act upon the dead 
animal or plant body parts, it breaks down. In some cases, it goes deep, deep into the ground. It continues to break down. And after several years, we say millions of years, it breaks down to a point of becoming crude oil and natural gas. Sometimes these living things died on the ground. And at other times, they died at the bottom of seas and ocean. Wherever the dead bodies were found, they broke down in the same manner to give us crude oil. So crude oil and natural gas is also not found in every country of the world. While some countries have crude oil and natural gas, other countries do not have it. Examples of countries where crude oil and natural gas has been discovered are countries such as Russia, America, Saudi Arabia, China, Canada, and Nigeria. In Nigeria, crude oil is also not found in all the states. It is found in some states, and it's not found in some states. It is mostly found in the Niger Delta regions. It is found in some of the states within the Niger Delta region. It can be found in other states of Nigeria, but it's mostly found in Niger Delta states. The first place where crude oil was found in Nigeria is somewhere in Bayasa. It is called Oloibri. So take note, that's the first place where crude oil was found in Nigeria. Crude oil and natural gas, as you say, it cannot be seen on the surface of the earth. Remember I said it is found deep inside the ground. It is deposited underground, deep, deep, deep inside the ground. So it cannot be seen on the surface of the earth. It is deposited between rocks deep inside the ground or deep inside the sea. So how do we get this crude oil out of the ground? Usually, scientists and engineers who work in the oil fields to extract crude oil, whenever they want to get crude oil, they first search for an area of land or an area of water to find out if crude oil is present. They do this with the aid of machines, such as this. Let's say this is the area of land. And we have scientists around this area trying to search for crude oil. They do this search with the aid of this vibrator truck and this recorder truck. When they use this kind of trucks, they are able to find out if an area of land has crude oil underneath it or if it doesn't have. This kind of search, that is a search for crude oil and natural gas, is called oil exploration. Take notes, oil exploration. And when crude oil has been discovered in a place, scientists and engineers will have to take measures to extract this crude oil from the ground, that's to get it from the ground. And the process of getting this crude oil from the ground is called drilling. You can see a group of engineers trying to search for crude oil. You can see another group of engineers trying to extract crude oil from the ground. Now let's look at the processes involved in the extraction of crude oil. That's the processes involved in getting crude oil from the ground. Remember we say the process of getting crude oil is called drilling. Oil exploration involves the use of certain machines as we saw in the previous picture, even drilling involves the use of machine. The machine used for drilling crude oil and um, natural gas is called the drilling rig. So we use a drilling rig to extract crude oil and natural gas. During drilling, that's during the process of getting the oil from the ground, the first substance that is gotten is natural gas. Remember we said both crude oil and natural gas are found deep inside the ground. So we have the natural gas at the top layer, then the crude oil is underneath it. So the natural gas comes out first, then it is followed by crude oil. Natural gas and crude oil, after they've been gotten from the ground, are stored in storage tanks. And from the storage tanks, they are taken to the industry for refining. They take them to the industry to process them into the various petrochemicals. If you look closely at this image, you see this is a drilling rig. 
that is planted on top of water, and this is another drilling rig on the surface of the land. This is an example of a drilling rig. You could see we have something like a long tube or pipe that is planted deep into the ground. It gets down to the point where we have crude oil and it begins to extract the crude oil from the ground. Now, after drilling, that's when the crude oil has been extracted from the ground. As we said, crude oil is a mixture of liquids. That is why it has a dark color. And as a mixture of liquids, it cannot be used in its raw form. We need to process it. We need to refine it before using it. So crude oil is processed and separated into more useful substances. They are called useful products. These useful products are also called the components of crude oil, or we can call them the fractions of crude oil. The fractions or components of crude oil are separated using a separation method called fractional distillation. Don't forget, we use the separation method called fractional distillation to separate the components of crude oil. This is an example of what fractional distillation looks like. In fractional distillation, crude oil is gotten from the storage tank and we pour it into a gas furnace. This gas furnace is usually heated. It's heated at a very high temperature between 500 to 600 degrees centigrade. It is very high. Now, as the crude oil begins to heat, as it begins to boil, it is expected that the various liquids that are part of crude oil will boil at different temperatures. Let me also mention this, that fractional distillation as a method of separation is used to separate mixture of liquids that have different boiling points. So when you have more than one liquid mixed together, it's expected that one would boil at the temperature of 100 degrees centigrade, and another may boil at the temperature of 200 degrees centigrade. So as this liquid begins to heat, the different liquids boil at their various temperatures and they are separated. So the various components of crude oil have different boiling points, as I've stated. So as the crude oil begins to get hot, as it's heated, each component flows as vapor. They flow through different tubes into different tanks where they are stored. Let's take a look at the fractional distillation. This is the gas furnace. The whole of this. This is a tank where we pour in the crude oil. And this is the heating chamber. It's expected at this point the crude oil is being heated. And as it continues to get hot, the different fractions flow through different tubes into their various storage tanks. They flow as vapor. Remember when a liquid begins to boil, it changes from the liquid state to the gaseous state, and it comes out as vapor. So when the liquid, when the crude oil begins to boil, the different liquids are released as vapor, and they begin to break down into their various fractions. This is one fraction. This is the tube for the next fraction. This is the third and so on. As these various gases flow from the fractional distillation chambers into their storage tanks, it's expected that the temperature begins to reduce. That means the, liquid, the gases begins to cool down. As it begins to cool down, it changes from being a gaseous chemical to liquid chemicals. So we have various fractions of crude oil that are gotten in their liquid forms. Now let's take a look at the fractions of crude oil. They include petroleum gas. It is also called refinery gas. This is the first fraction that is gotten from the distillation of crude oil. It is the first because it has a very small boiling point. It begins to boil at the temperature of 20 to 30 degrees centigrade. So it is the first liquid that boils and it comes out as vapor from fractional distillation. The next one is petrol. Petrol is also called gasoline. Petrol, we, are, we know what petrol is. We have naphtha, that's the third one. 
We have kerosene. We also have diesel, lubricating oil. That's this kind of oil used to lubricate different parts of metals. We have fuel oil, bitumen. Bitumen is used for the construction of roads and other structures. Natural gas is also refined or processed like crude oil. Natural gas is processed in the industry to give us dry natural gas. This dry natural gas is commonly referred to or usually known as methane. Although we can process natural gas to have other chemical substances such as propane and so on. We use methane as fuel for cooking. We use it as domestic fuel in our gas. There's a gas cooker at home. You can use methane as fuel for cooking. Methane can also be used to operate the engines of vehicles and machines. So they can also use them as fuel to operate engines of vehicles and machines. Natural gas can also be processed to get other chemicals. And they can also be processed and used to manufacture various items in different industries. Examples of such items that can be manufactured from natural gas are drugs, fertilizers, plastic items, textile, and detergents. Having learned about the process of extracting and refining of crude oil and natural gas, I'd like us to look at the various uses of crude oil. One, to look at the first fraction. We say the first fraction is petroleum gas or refinery gas. It comes out as gas. It comes out, we get it as gas. But sometimes the petroleum gas is liquefied to give us liquefied petroleum gas. The uses of liquefied petroleum gas are as follows. It is used as fuel for cooking. It is used for the operation of vehicles. They call that auto gas. It is also used as refrigerant. We use it in fridges to operate fridges properly. The second is petrol. That's gasoline. Gasoline comes out as liquid. Gasoline is used as fuel for vehicles, for the engines of vehicles. We have naphtha. Naphtha is also called ligorine. Naphtha is gotten as liquid and it is processed further to get other chemicals. We process naphtha into different chemicals and these chemicals are used in various industries to manufacture other items such as plastic. Kerosene. Kerosene sometimes is called paraffin. Kerosene is gotten as a liquid and it is used as fuel for cooking. We use kerosene in our stoves. Kerosene is also used to power the engines of aircraft or airplanes. So we call kerosene. Sometimes it's called aviation fuel. The next one is light gas. Light gas and heavy gas are part of fuel oil. We can also call them fuel oil. They are gotten in liquid form. The light gas is used as fuel to power vehicles and machines. Heavy gases are used as raw materials to manufacture industrial products. Lubricating oil. Lubricating oil come as liquid and they are used as motor oil to grease and lubricate various metal items. Paraffin wax. Paraffin wax is gotten as solid and it is used as raw material to manufacture items such as candles and crayons. Asphalt. Asphalt is gotten in its solid state and it is used for the construction of roads and other structures. Apart from the uses we have mentioned, the various fractions of crude oil or the various chemicals gotten from natural gas as, are used in industries to manufacture several items. Here is a list of some of the items that are manufactured from the fractions of crude oil and natural gas. We have plastics, textiles, paints, ink, shoe polish, nylon, cosmetics, candle wax, asphalt, fertilizers, tires, pesticides, detergents, crayons, drugs, and rubber items. So you see the products of crude oil and petrochemicals are so large that you find them almost everywhere. 
Why is crude oil important? And why do we need natural gas? Crude oil is important because it is a source of energy. It provides fuel and gases that are used to generate energy all over the world. Use products of crude oil and natural gas to operate engines of different vehicles and equipment. We also use it in our homes to generate energy for cooking. Crude oil is also a source of revenue. Countries that produce crude oil and natural gas refine them and sell these products. When they sell these products, they generate money that is revenue for their country. So it is a source of revenue. Crude oil has also brought about foreign exchange. Countries that have crude oil and natural gas sell these products to other countries. Sometimes they sell them raw or they refine these products and they sell to other countries. When they do this, the other country buying these products pay them in foreign currency. So we can say through the sale of crude oil and natural gas, foreign exchange has been generated. Another importance of crude oil is it is a source of raw materials for industries. You can agree with me that crude oil provides industrial raw materials for the manufacture of various items. We've listed some of the items. They include plastics, pesticides, fertilizers, and cosmetic items. Crude oil also creates avenue for employment. It provides employment for people such as scientists and engineers who work in oil fields, those who work in refineries, and people who work in the various petrochemical industries. They all get jobs because of crude oil and natural gas. Crude oil and natural gas promotes development. It brings about development of a country. This development can occur in different ways. Some of the ways are the revenue, that is the money that is generated from the sale of crude oil and other petrochemical items, can be used to develop a country. For example, in Nigeria, we generate money from the sale of crude oil, from the various products of crude oil and natural gas. And with this money, we use it to develop our country. Investors from all over the world are attracted to a country that produces crude oil or a country that has natural gas. These investors help such countries to establish different structures that brings about development. Such investors can build structures such as factories and industries. They can also build schools. When they build all of these structures, sometimes they employ people to work there, creating jobs and employment. People that work in such factories are paid and from their salaries, they also pay their taxes. And with the taxes, the country develops and grows. Some fractions of crude oil, such as asphalt and coke, are used to construct roads and other structures in a country. And with the construction of roads, of course, we can say a country is developed. You will agree with me that crude oil and natural gas are very important to any country. And a country that has it, indeed is blessed. At this point, we'll summarize all we've been learning in today's lesson. We said crude oil and natural gas are substances that are found deep inside the ground. They occur naturally. Crude oil and natural gas are formed as a result of the breakdown of living organisms which died millions of years ago. We also said petrochemicals are the various products that are derived from crude oil and natural gas. You said petrochemicals are used as fuel for cooking, the operation of vehicles, machines, and equipment, and they are also used for the manufacturing of various items. Crude oil is important because it generates revenue, it provides energy and raw materials, it brings about foreign exchange, it creates employment, and it promotes the development of a country. At this point, I'd like to test how well you've learned from this lesson 
by taking this question. Which of these is not a component of crude oil? A. Nafta B. Bitumen C. Natural gas and D. Kerosene The correct answer is option C. Natural gas Natural gas is not a fraction or a component of crude oil. It occurs deep inside the ground on its own. We have come to the end of this class. I hope you've learned a lot and I hope you understand what crude oil, natural gas and petrochemicals are. I hope you can identify the various petrochemical products around you. I hope to see you in our next class. Bye.